four. Anybody in the group? Three. Oh, it's going to be bad. Two, one. Y'all are already out. Go ahead, Toby. I have to get a petition. So you're actually going to have a recall petition, and then what do you have to do? Four. Yeah, you're in the group. You gotta get signatures from registered voters, and this is one, two, three, four. So you're going to draft a recall petition, and then you're gonna get signatures from registered voters, and then the State Board of Election is going to verify that these are registered voters. It's usually three to five percent. And then once this is verified, there's a special election. What are the two questions that are on the ballot? Five. Y'all can look at your notes. Oh, it's going to be bad. Four, three, two. Go ahead. You still have it. OK, I guess not. Anybody want this? Um, I think like, one is to ask, like, why would you want, like, who would you want to take his spot? Do you want to recall so-and-so from office? One, two, three, four. And it's not a president. It would be like a governor or a mayor. And not all states have this, but many of them do. If you answer no, you're done because you want the person to stay in office. But if you answer yes, then that's where the second question comes in. What's the second question? Go ahead. Um, who, do you want to who do you want to replace? Yeah. Do you remember a recall election that we talked about? Not Florida, minus four. California. It was California, but your group is out because she just missed it. It's actually, it was California. And go back and think about Schwarzenegger. Do you remember the people that were in that election? There were actors, there were porn stars, there were strippers, there were sumo wrestlers, and all they had to do was get a percentage, and then they could run for elected office. Pick me a category. Y'all gave me the last correct answer. And you'll notice up here, um, go ahead back to that really quick. It was four. No, it wasn't articles. Um, I think it was uh, chapter one. Chapter one. Yeah, click it. Um, you notice up there, draft and collect. So you're going to draft and collect signatures, verify the signatures, special election, two questions we talked about, and then ultimately the person that wins would be the one that gets it. Pick me a category, though. Go fast. Constitution for three. Constitution for three. Click it. Articles in the Constitution, first hand I see. Go ahead, Ethan. Uh, article 1 giving power to the legislature. Article 1 is the legislative branch. Keep going. Article 2 is the executive. Article 2 is the executive, plus Arti 3. Article 3 is the judicial. Plus 6 now. Article 4 is the powers given to. No. Have we talked about Article 4? No. Probably a good idea to move on. What's uh, Article 5? 5, 4, 3. Go ahead, Alfred. No, just want you to start with Article 5. Article 5 is amendments. Article 5 is amendments. And, oh, wow. Okay, you're negative 2 now. This is to get to positive. What's Article 6 deal with? Uh, debt supremacy and oaths. Okay, there's something that we talked about specific with Article 6. Not that. Anybody in the group? We talked about it yesterday. 4, 3, 2, 1. Y'all are out. Go ahead. Religious freedom? Religious freedom is guaranteed, but there's a second thing that's really important. Five, four, three, two. Yeah, you've already told me that. What's the second thing that's mentioned in Article 6? No free man shall be taken or imprisoned. Okay, now people are just blurting things out. Louis Vaughn said freedom of speech. That's minus three. Yeah, I can't. No, wait, that's the wrong group. Yeah, it's up here. Okay, um, the second thing is supremacy clause of the Constitution. What was Article 7? Article 7 was ratification of the Constitution. Click it. <clears throat> or touch the house, I'm sorry. Okay, pick me a category. Y'all have a chance to make a move here. Federalism for two minutes. Federalism for two. Article 6, go ahead and click this one. We already just went through it. Um, supremacy clause, make sure that you're comfortable with that. Pick me another one. Uh, federalism 3. Federalism 3. List all you can. Click it. Here's your chance, group. The Man Act. What was the Mann Act? The Mann Act was... Y'all have it first. First hand I see has it next. Man, It'll be y'all. The Mann Act was if someone was to cross state... If a man and a woman was to, start, was to cross state bounds and then with immoral purposes, they would be arrested. 
One, two, three. Not necessarily arrested. If a man crossed state lines with a woman with immoral purposes in mind, then he would be subject to federal prosecution. Now, before we get into specifics, you know, with, with later, why did they originally pass this law 100 years ago? Because people would uh, kidnap women and take them across state lines. Yeah, they would. And they would kidnap them, take them across state lines, and... Uh, set them up as prostitutes. Yeah, they would. They basically pimp them out kind of a thing. So the federal government passed this, and when they passed this, they're like, if you're going to do this, you're going to be subject to, to federal prosecution. What's the problem in the modern context for this? Uh, men and women tend to travel a lot of the places, and a lot of the time they go as couples, and necessarily like they go over to other states. Like so like husband and wife? Like husband and wife, or boyfriend and girlfriend go over with... Not is friends. it husband and wife? No, well, friends. It's friends. It's like friends. Like groups of friends go, yeah, yeah, friends. go <laughs> cross state boundaries to go to the beach or let's go to Vegas or. And like, then what happens? They commit. They practice immoral. They have immoral practices, which could be anything. They have immoral practices, which could be anything. What I had mentioned with y'all on this the other day with the Man Act. The Man Act is basically saying that, you know, if you cross state lines with immoral purposes in mind, and the trick on this is, is that I had asked y'all if you went to the beach, or if you went to an out-of-state beach, if you stayed together, if you went with friends, males and females, did they all share their own rooms, were any of them married? Because if not, that could, in the wrong situation, be considered immoral, which means that you could be prosecuted. Now, let me stress you, I'm not saying the federal government is looking for this, but I'm saying that they, if they find it, ultimately that's something that they could, they could pursue. Can you give me the example of the man modern that got busted with a Man Act threat? Go ahead. The governor of New York uh, flew a prostitute from the, I forget his name. What was his name? Yeah, five. Anybody in the group? Four. First hand I see. Three, two, one. The governor of New York, I'll give you some points on that. Governor Spitzer of New York. Go ahead, Carla. What do you want to tell me that happened to him? Go ahead, your group still has it. Um, he got a prostitute and he traveled state lines with that prostitute. Yeah, paid six figures for her ultimately is what he did. And you go back on this, they threatened him with the Man Act prosecution. So yeah, this is still valid. He resigned from the governor, they dropped the prosecution. That's really all that they wanted. Go ahead, pick me a category. Touch the house if you would, Nong. Pick me a category. Y'all are comfortably ahead and mercifully we're almost out of time. Got to go fast, though. Constitution for four. Constitution for four. Pictionary, I need somebody to draw. Yeah, somebody in your group, come on up. Y'all, please be ready. This exam can be really good, or you can really get embarrassed about it. Got it? One minute on the one. It is a sandbox. Wow. It's a sandbox. What's the significance of sandbox? Y'all have it from chapter two. They got it. You can tell it. They got it. Y'all have it, sandbox. You'll have it next. Five. One, two. Yeah, you can go. Three, four. Castle Doctrine minus four. You've just given it right back. Lewis on, what's the significance of sandbox? This is the uh, separation of powers. It is separation of powers. Explain it to me. Uh... The judiciary. Or anybody in the group, go ahead. Executive and legislative branches all have checks and balances by separation. Well, what is separation of powers first? Let's, let's like start they there. They all control like something different, like. Congress. Can you give me an example of something that Congress controls? Congress controls the uh, new bill being passed. Congress controls passing laws. One, two, three, four. Tell me more. The legislative branch controls. Congress declares war. One, two, three, four. Uh, the executive branch with the president, he is the commander of the wars. Commander in chief. One, two, three, four. Anything else you can tell me? So what is separation of powers? 
Y'all have it. Making sure that each branch does what they're supposed to do and stays in that area. Each branch is going to be given certain powers in Article 1, Article 2, Article 3 that only they can use. So only the president is commander-in-chief. Only the Congress can declare war. These kinds of things. Um, what is checks and balances? And your group still has it. Checks and balances and stuff like when the Congress... Zoom in on this good. <laughs> when the Congress try to like pass a law and the, and the president can veto the law... Veto is a good example. One, two, three, four of a check and balance. Anything else? Um, what can the Congress do if the president vetoes the law? Five. They can take it to. They can take it to the Supreme Court. Minus four. M, go ahead. They can actually potentially override the veto, and y'all are Cattell's group. One, two, three, four. So, and then if ultimately they override it and it becomes law, where then can you go if you really don't like this law? Judicial review by the courts. That's another example of a check and a balance. One, two, three, four. So a check and a balance, uh, separation of powers is each branch is going to have certain powers that only they can use. Checks and balances is going to be the idea that each branch is going to have certain checks to be able to limit the powers of the other ones. Make sure that you're comfortable with examples for these because we talked about several of them when we were going through stuff with, with class. Pick me a category because we're just about out of time. And y'all have a chance to really make a move here, so pick a good one. Federalism for one. Federalism for one. That's going to do it right there. Click it if you would, Nung. Um, first state to give women the right to vote. First state to give 18-year-olds the right to vote. The only state that has a one-house legislature. Go ahead. Uh, the first one to give 18-year-olds to vote, I think it was Wyoming. Minus one. Go ahead. Minus two. Yeah, that's not good. Go ahead, Am. You were next, I think. Minus three. Go ahead, Doa. You gave what? Georgia gave the 18-year-olds the right to vote. Yes, they did. Who gave women the right to vote? Anybody? Five. You got it? One's House legislature? No? Go ahead, Alfred. Yes. Wisconsin or Wyoming or one of them? Wyoming. I'm going to cut you some slack on that. It actually was. It was Wyoming. And what group are y'all? Uh, Alfred's group. Okay, so now y'all are negative two. <laughs> one House state legislature was Nebraska. These were experiments um, that either turned into federal law or in, a, in Nebraska's case did it. Okay, here's your chance to get to be positive so you can gain some points. Pick me a category. Get it right. Articles. Please! <laughs> Articles for three. Articles for three. Examples of two out of three. When we were talking in class, I had mentioned to you when we were talking about separation of powers and checks and balances, you need two of the three branches typically to get something done. First hand I see. Can you give me some examples? Go ahead, um, V. I got that. So what are the examples? Like, what would be these two branches? What would they be doing? Three, um, two. It would be like the executive and the, the legislative. Doing what? Um, working together to like pass like a law. Passing a law would work on this. Yeah, it, it actually would. Uh, and that's one, two, three. Anything else? Four, three, two, one. Go, Ethan. Uh, it would take the judicial and the legislative branch to get a, to, um, get a president out of power to, uh, go ahead, help him. Uh, I don't know what he's going to say. I don't know what he's saying either. Go ahead, help him. Uh, it was Congress with the uh, power to raise army and then the president to declare war. The President declares war. Other yeah, way around. Other way Wait, hold up. Sure now. Um, go back and look at that article assault on separation of powers. The <laughs> courts and the All executive right. branch for a prosecution. The courts and the executive branch to gain a search warrant. These were kinds of examples. The President and Congress working together to pass a law or to declare war, not necessarily raise the army on this. Let's see, Jack Screw. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 28. 5, 10, 15, 20 for Cattell. 5, 10, 15, 20 for Offended. Okay, Carla's group is number one. 
And then Alfred's group is in last. So Carla's group, if y'all will write down plus 11 and sign your names, make sure I get that really, really fast. Uh, Jack's group, if y'all will write down plus 9 and sign your names and give that to me. Cattell and Offended group, if y'all will write down plus 7 and if y'all will write your names and give that to me. And then Alfred's group.